This is the new S23 Ultra and it's probably the phone with the most amount of features. I went through everything and here are the top eight that I think are the most useful and interesting. Okay, so to make the most out of the cameras here, you should definitely know about these things. First is the Camera Assistant app, which is made by Samsung and you can find it in the Galaxy Store. In here, there's a setting called Picture Softening. Sometimes you might find that the 12 megapixel images from this phone look a bit too sharpened, especially when you zoom in, but with some picture softening applied, it could help reduce that look. And you don't lose detail, it's not like the image is slightly blurred in post, but more so there's just less sharpening applied in the first place. And I find that the medium setting here tends to give the best look. All right, and going over to the camera app. So in addition to the photo and video, there are quite a few unique modes on here. One of them is single take, where you can record something for up to 15 seconds, and then it'll just make a bunch of photos and videos from that. If you have pets who constantly move, this might be fun to try with them because it could capture some interesting things. And another one is the director's view here, where it records both the front and the back camera simultaneously. And you can also switch between the ultra wide, the telephoto, and the main lens. Honestly, I think this is a really sick feature and it could be great for vlogging, but I do feel like it is very underused. Okay, and the last thing to know is Expert Raw, which is also a separate app that you can find in the Galaxy Store. If you want to take any kind of raw photo at all, definitely use this app because the result is just so, so much better. I feel like the raw straight from the camera app is probably not processed, which is what you want from a real camera. But the smartphone with no processing is just not great. It lacks quite a bit of dynamic range and it also looks like it has a lot of noise. Now, Samsung's default photo gallery also has quite a few very good features. One of them is remastering a picture with just one click. And I feel like it especially helps with photos that are taken with this phone's 10 times telephoto camera. Straight out of the camera, the 10 times photo can sometimes look a bit hazy, but the remastering can take away almost all of the haziness. So so it really helps. Okay, and the next feature appeared on the iPhone first, but now it's here on the Samsung too, and that's pressing and holding on a subject in order to get a transparent cutout of it. I love this whole concept. It's not particularly useful, but I've been having lots of fun just sending transparent cutouts to my friends. Just find it hilarious. And another thing that you can press and hold to select on the Samsung is text in both photos and videos. This has definitely been quite helpful a few times. And next, so you can actually manually make a transparent cutout by clicking the edit and then clicking this circle icon. If the automatic one doesn't get exactly what you want, then you can just draw a rough outline around the subject that you want to cut out and then it'll just snap to it automatically. And yeah, now I've just made a cutout of myself and I can even add a border to it too. The S Pen makes this even easier to do. And if you want to erase something from your photo, whether that's strangers or even reflections and shadows, then you can use the object eraser tool that's built right in. Click on the three dots menu and you'll see it. I'm going to erase these strangers back here so that it will seem like I'm the only one in this photo. And yeah, they're gone. It's super quick. I think the result here looks great too. The object eraser tends to work very well when the thing is small. And the S Pen is very handy for this because you can get very precise with it. And more about the S Pen. So it's not just for writing notes and annotating screenshots. One pretty unique thing that you can do is if you have a clip that you like, you can actually make a GIF from it using the Smart Select tool. It can be found in the S Pen menu and just make sure to select the GIF and then just crop the GIF to the clip size and you can record up to 15 seconds with it. Now I have a GIF of this. So you can send this to your friends, but what I like to use it for is to actually put it onto my always on display. Each time it plays for a little bit and I just think it looks really cool. This next S Pen feature is very convenient. It's the screen off memo feature where you can just pull out the S Pen and then start writing on the screen immediately. I use this pretty often to take quick reminder notes. Sometimes I also doodle with this, although I'm very bad at drawing and you can pin this this node or whatever it is to the always on display too, which can definitely be pretty helpful. And there are a few ways to customize the S Pen 2 with the Pentastic app, which is from Goodlock, that's from the Galaxy Store. In this app, so first you can choose what you want your S Pen menu to look like. And there are also quite a few different pointer options too. You can even set a custom one. This is kind of scary. <laughs> I do really like this little heart one though. 
You can even change the sound that you hear when you put in and pull out the S Pen. And again, there's a custom option, but probably the most useful thing in here is the double tap shortcut. Right now I have it set such that whenever I hold down on the button and double tap on the screen, it brings up Samsung Notes. However, you can change it to any of these S Pen features or any app on your phone. Something that you might not know is that the S Pen can actually translate. Open up the S Pen menu and then click on translate and just hover the S Pen over whatever you want to translate. You can either translate one word at a time or even full paragraphs. This could be super useful. And I also just want to mention that you can actually customize this S Pen menu. These are all the S Pen features that you can have there, but you can also just replace them with any app on the phone. And one last thing that I want to mention are air actions. Basically, when you press down and hold on the button and then do an action like this or like this or like this, this. There are certain apps that will do some sort of action. So for example, in the camera app, this thing will switch between the modes and this will switch between the front and back camera and just pressing the button will take a picture. And this is probably the only air action that I find useful and meaningful. The other ones, they're just a bit too slow and they're also not the most reliable to do. Like I just did <laughs> that wrong there. I don't really use the air actions. If you use air actions, please let me know how you use it because I'm curious. And in addition to the Pentastic app, another app that I always get from Goodlock is the Keys Cafe because it just styles my keyboard in the best way. So there are a bunch of different styles that you can choose from. I actually personally just stick to the default. Instead, I go to the effects and here I can add these rainbow color effects to my keyboard so that whenever I type, it lights up and it just reminds me of my mechanical keyboard, which I really like. All right, so when it comes to wallpapers, I'm pretty indecisive and I also like to switch them up. And the good thing is that now in One UI 5.1, in the modes and routines, you can set it so that your wallpapers switch with the modes. This way you can essentially switch wallpapers with just one click by toggling on the mode like this. In the modes and routines, you can set which wallpaper goes with each mode down here. But the modes and routines is of course way more than just switching wallpapers. You can also set who is allowed to call and message you and also which apps are allowed to send you notifications when each mode is toggled on. There are also some settings that you can change here. For example, turning on the dark mode. You can even have it start playing some music or open up an app. And now here are some small but very useful features. One is that you can start multiple timers in the clock app. And also if you exit the app with the timer still running, then it will actually become a pop-up like this. And after a while, it does go into a little pill. It's pretty nice to be able to always see my active timer. And the next one is extra dim, which lets you go beyond the minimum brightness on the phone. Sometimes I like to go on my phone before I sleep and it's really dark and this extra dim does help to not to sear my eyes. And the nice thing is that there is a button for it. It's not there by default, but you can just add it into the pull down menu. And now you have a very quick way to get to it. And on the other end of the brightness spectrum is extra bright. So normally when you're indoors, you can actually go to the max brightness with the manual slider and you don't really have to usually, but if for some reason you want to max out the screen brightness, you can just toggle on the extra bright and push it all the way. And next is Dex. So this phone can essentially cast a desktop onto a monitor. A pretty niche use case for this is if you're going to a library that has monitors, keyboards, and mouse, and you don't want to bring your laptop, so you can just bring the S23 Ultra and then Dex it to the monitor, connect the keyboard and mouse to it, and do work, write your essay, do whatever <laughs> with just the phone. But probably a more broad use case is to play games. You can dex the game onto the larger monitor so that you have a nicer large screen experience and you can even hook up a controller to it so that you get the full large screen gaming experience. And lastly, so the S23 Ultra is probably the best phone for taking self photos. If you often take your own photos, which I do, then something that could be very useful is that you can actually just tell the Samsung to take a photo or video like this capture. So this thing is actually pretty hidden in the camera settings and then in the shooting methods. You can see there's a few words that you can say to trigger it, like capture, cheese. You can also just show your palm to take a photo. However, I've noticed that with the palm, you do have to be pretty close to the phone for it to detect it, but you can be much farther away and the phone can still hear you if you yell at it. And if you don't want to yell at the phone, you can always use the S Pen as a remote shutter button. This is what I do most of the time. And actually in the camera assistant app, 
you can set it so that the phone takes multiple photos each time. And a bonus point is that the S23 Ultra charges very fast at 45 watts, which means it can charge from zero to full in less than one hour. But since the phone doesn't come with a charger, to do this, you'll have to buy a separate charger. And here is the Anchor 313 charger from today's sponsor. It supports super fast charging 2.0 on the Ultra and guarantees 45 watt peak charging power. So this charger can give the phone a full charge in less than an hour. This charger is also powered by GAN technology. It's actually 30% smaller than the Samsung 45 watt charger. This Anchor charger also has foldable prongs and it's compatible with all kinds of Samsung devices, including laptops and Apple and other Android devices too. I also have the Anchor 312 charger, which guarantees 25 watt peak charging for the S23. It's also very small, 23% smaller than the Samsung 25 watt charger. It also has foldable prongs and this charger has multi-protect technology, which offers 10 layers of protection, including over voltage protection, current regulation, and over temperature protection for the phone. So you don't need to worry about anything. It's also compatible with all mobile devices. If you're looking for a powerful charger for your new S23 device, whether that's the Ultra Plus or the regular one, then be sure to check out the Anchor Ace charger at the link down below. So yeah, those were the features. Let me know which one you think is the most interesting and you can watch more here.